Welcome back to the Two Minute Warning. Today, I'm looking at the New England Patriots and determining whether or not I think they will make the playoffs in this upcoming 2021 NFL season. But before getting to that topic, it is well known when Stephon Gilmore is healthy, he might be the best corner in the NFL. He won Defensive Player of the Year in 2019. However, when he was hurt this past season, Jalen Ramsey seemed to be the clear number one. But outside of football, between those top two corners, Stephon Gilmore and Jalen Ramsey, who wins that fight? Comment down below in that you know brawl in the ring, who's going down as a winner. But in all seriousness, getting to the topic, we know the New England Patriots have probably made the most free agent offseason moves this entire season. They definitely made the most noise in free agency for sure. Yeah, there's been some trades and some big signings, but overall I think the most moves goes to the New England Patriots. Some notable names that they signed, Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne, Jonu Smith, Hunter Henry. Four pretty solid receivers that the, that the Patriots are definitely going to use on offense. And then on defense, they signed Devon Godshaw, Matt Judon, uh, Kyle Van Noy. They basically stole him from the Dolphins. So overall, this Patriots team last year went 7-9, and nine, and things couldn't have been worse. Cam Newton had COVID. He missed a few games. They didn't have practice. They didn't have OTAs. Yeah, no other team had that. I get that. But like I said, Cam had COVID, so he was out a few games. He had zero receivers to throw to, and his number one guy went healthy with Julian Edelman. But even he got hurt, so he's left with Jacoby Myers and Nikhil Harris, who I think can evolve to be good players, but those are super young guys, only two years in the league, and you're asking them to be number one and number two receivers. He didn't really have great tight ends. The defense, New England's defense is pretty always going to be decent because Bill Belichick is leading them, and you're going to get Matt Patricia back. He wasn't great in Detroit, but he's a hell of a coordinator with New England. And then a couple of your guys last year, Stephon Gilmore, like I said, your number one corner, he got hurt, he didn't play. Your top linebacker, Dante Hightower, he set out, he didn't play. Patrick Chung, Chung he set out, he didn't play. And same with the McCourty brothers, they did not play. So overall, this Patriots team is going to get a lot better even outside of free agency because they're going to have Cam Newton back, who I know is going to be a problem. I know Cam Newton's not going to be the quarterback that fears other that other teams fear. He's not going to be MVP Cam, and I understand how this may seem very bold for them to make the playoffs because Cam is not reliable. But overall, I think now that Cam has one more year under his belt with the Patriots, he's used to the system, and now that he has receivers to throw to, he doesn't have a 6'4 go up and get it receiver, but he's got two 6'5 go up and get it tight ends between Johnny Smith and Hunter Henry with, that can do the job as well. And like I said, getting Julian Edelman back, he's a safety blanket, he's reliable hands. Nelson Aguilar, he'll be a decent deep threat. Kendrick Bourne, solid guy. And then Nikhil Harry and Jacoby Myers, who I didn't like at number one and number two receivers last year. I still don't like them at that, but I sure as hell like them when they're four, number four and number five on the depth chart. I'm going to take them there any day. So the amount of depth they have on the receiving court is solid. You did lose Joe Tooney, probably your, one of your best offensive linemen, definitely your best offensive guard probably in free agency to the Kansas City Chiefs. But overall, I think the Patriots, they always draft pretty well off when it comes to offensive line. I think we'll continue to do that this year. And even then, even losing Joe Tooney, it's not like this offensive line is dog crap. So offense, it's not gonna be stellar with Damian Harris and Sonny Michelle running the football, but the Patriots have never been known for having the best running back in the league. They have a running back that is reliable and consistent. You got James White back. They just have a complete different running back scheme. You can't really judge, judge them on pounding the football as a straight running back that just pushes a pile like a Glenn Fournette or Chris Carson type of run run scheme so with the quarterback used to being used to this game plan a running game that you know what kind of schemes you're going to run and a receiving core that is finally reliable this offense is going to go to the next level and the defense that now has better pass rush with Devon Godshaw and uh, Matt Judon and a great linebacker core Matt Judon is technically a linebacker so your linebacker core is kind of looking at Matt Judon from the Ravens who's a really good linebacker Dante Hightower, you know how successful he has been for the Patriots in the late postseason and in the Super Bowl. And then, like I said, Kyle Van Noy was almost a steal from the Dolphins. And then looking in the secondary, you signed Jalen Mills from the Philadelphia Eagles, who's not the best corner. He's not going to lock anyone down. But you're not asking to be number one because you're getting Stephon Gilmore back. And you'll have a um, Devin McCourty back. You did lose Patrick Chung to retirement, but the secondary is still solid when you got Steph Stephon Gil Gilmore leading them and you got Devin McCourty and Jalen Mills to back them up. So overall, this Patriots team last year went 7-9 with a quarterback that was sick and didn't wasn't used to the game plan, a receiving core that was hurt and was not there, and a defense that was hurt and sat out, and now you were getting those injuries to finally be healthy, and then you're adding more. You're adding more weapons you're on offense and defense, and just being used to this system and having chemistry with the team, I think Cam Newton's going to perform better than we think. 
he had several games last year where he threw for under yards, threw for under 100 yards and had like a pick or two and zero passing touchdowns and he still won the game. He's not going to get by that this year and make a playoff run with those type of games, win or not. That is just not a playoff team, a quarterback that throws 100 yards or less and still somehow wins the game. So we need to see more out of Cam. We know he can run still. He, I think he had more rushing touchdowns and passing touchdowns last year, if I'm not mistaken. So we know he still has that in him, but he needs to pass the football. However, he does now have the receivers to catch the football. I do think last year is a fault on both sides. Cam had bad throws, but he had receivers that dropped easy throws. So it really goes both ways. We'll see this year how it goes when he's got receivers that can catch the ball. There's a lot of athleticism at the tight end position between John New Smith, Hunter Henry, a lot of reliability in Julian Edelman, and a good, um, good amount of deep threats in Nelson Aguilar, Kendrick Bourne, Jacoby Myers, and Nikhil Harry. Like I said, the receiving core doesn't have a top number one X factor like DK Metcalf or Devontae Adams, but they got number twos all around. It's a pretty stacked thing when you have relatively, you have an argument of five number two receivers on your team. I know that's not ideal, but I think it'll make it work with Cam Newman. He just needs reliable receivers that can catch the football and all of these guys can do that. Overall, and this, I think this team will make the playoffs. I have faith in Cam to do a little bit better. I'm not asking him to be MVP Cam, and I don't think he will be. But I just think going seven to nine with the worst amount of outcomes possible to go and to go your way. I think they're going to have a lot more luck this year, a lot more weapons this year, and I got them being a playoff team. And I could even see them fighting for the AFC East. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, looking at their schedule, I know they play the NFC South. It won't be fun to play the Bucs, but I think the Patriots could go 3-1 and one against the NFC South, beat the Falcons, Panthers, Saints. It won't be easy, but I think it's possible. I think you could get, um, you could sweep the Jets. That's two more wins. You're already at 5-0. and oh, Not it wouldn't exactly fall on 5-0, oh, but you already have five wins. I think you could split with the Bills and the Dolphins. You're already at seven wins. And as the season goes on, I do think this can be a 10-win team that makes the playoffs and be not a serious, dangerous threat that is Super Bowl contender, but no one wants to play Bill Belichick in the playoffs. And therefore, I think this team will make a playoff run, and they still have the number 15th overall pick in the NFL draft. Curious to see what they'll do there. Are they going to go get a Devontae Smith, and now they do have an X-Factor receiver? Are they going to get a pass rusher? Are they going to get a corner? Either way, number 15 overall can be a huge electric player to take this team to the next level and guarantee them a playoff lock. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Do you think the Patriots are going to the playoffs or not? And who wins that fight, Stephon Gilmore or Jalen Ramsey? To me, I'd have to go with Jalen Ramsey. We've already seen him get in a good amount of tussles and fights. He's got with A.J. Green, and he argues with players a lot. Stephon Gilmore seems like more a calm, nonchalant guy, but we will see. Thanks for watching, guys. Tune in the morning.